I actually don't get too nervous doing these things, so uh, we're just kind of here to do it. But yeah, like uh, Pastor Brooks said, and that is really loud, uh, like Pastor Brooks said, uh, I'm finally out of troop school, I'm finally home full time, I'm enjoying it, sorry if I walk around just follow me with the cameras, I don't like standing still too much. Um, anyway, so yeah, finally out of troop school, that was a very long ordeal, it wasn't fun. Parts of it were, were fun, but you know, it, it was a fun time to, to, to learn a lot of things, fun time to speak, to speak about God to, to people within troop school. Um, that, that, that's part of our, our jobs as Christians, to be missionaries outside of the church. If you're a Christian, you're, you're not a missionary outside of the church, you are an imposter. Even though you aren't a, a so-called goer, you weren't sent to be a missionary, you are still meant to be a missionary outside of the church. When we leave this church, we are the church, right? Um, so we just always need to be mindful of that. And, you know, um, I, I had several, um, several occasions that I got to talk about God to people at troop school, and some, some of them took it pretty well, some, some of them didn't, and, you know, that's unfortunate, but it's part of it, right? We can't, we can't win every single soul. Unfortunately, there's going to be more people in hell than there is in heaven. But you know what can change that? We can change that by starting today, by trying to get out there and save that one soul, because at the end of the day, if I reach one person with the word of God, then I did my job. So... Um, that, that, that's kind of my little spill to get started. Um, we're, we're back home. We're going to Florida next week. So we'll be gone on Sunday. We'll be gone next Wednesday. But after that, we're here full time. And if I catch you speeding on the freeway, I will give you a ticket. But no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Anyway, so funny thing is, um, I believe it was Aaron that I, I, I would assume that posted the prayer guide all, online on Facebook, right? And um, a lot of these sermons I write throughout troop school, I write in my free time. So I've already had this one prepared for months, but it's just, when is the Lord going to call me to preach it? And here we are tonight. Uh, th- this, this specific uh, sermon is over fervent prayer. And when I saw that post of that little prayer guy, I said, man, the Lord works in some mysterious ways, but here we are. Fervent prayer, if you don't know what the word fervent means, is to... So kind of sum it down, break it down for you. It's to be hot, very warm, excited. You're passionate about something. I'm passionate about my job. If I'm not passionate about my job, something's wrong. If I don't want to go out there and protect the citizens of the state of Arkansas, something's wrong. And un- unfortunately, sometimes I have to take people to jail. I have to give, give, give tickets, stuff like that. But a majority of, the part, majority of my job is to educate the public. Hey, man, you're, you're going too fast. I need to slow down. Hey, your license is, is suspended. What can we do to make that valid, right? Um, just because you make contact with someone doesn't mean you have to give them a ticket every single time um, and break their bank. But like prayer and like my job and like swimming, I swam in college. I was very passionate about that. I was, I was pretty good. I, I wasn't Michael Phelps. I'm not that good. But like that, I was excited for that. And with your prayer life, you should be excited. You should be fervent in your prayer life. The one thing in troop school was I was a mediocre prayer warrior, whatever you want to call it. I prayed every once in a while. Some days I miss. You know, I wake up. Um, I totally forget to read the Word of God. I totally forget to pray. Um, my big thing for me is prayer at night. I'll lay down in my bed. You know, um, a lot of times I just pray kind of in my head. And then all of a sudden I wake up, and it's 2.30 a.m., and I totally messed up that prayer, and then, then I basically had to restart. But while I was in troop school, I got really fervent in that prayer life because, you know, as, well, you, you don't know because you've never been there, but <laughs> troop school, you're constantly getting smoked. They call it IT, intensive training, and uh, you're just constantly getting drilled and drilled and drilled. So I, I turned to prayer to get me through it. Um, at times, I might not be able to read this because, you know, they're coming in there and you're, and they're thrashing your room, they're throwing all your stuff up, or like, like around, and then you've got to put it back together a certain way. But you've got so much time to pray, right? You, you can talk to the Lord within your head. If you want to speak it out loud, there's so many, t- so many ways to, to pray. So during that time, I, I got pretty fervent in my prayer life, and you see miracles when that happens. You, you see a lot of things come to life when you, when you, when you are fervent in that prayer. So... Before I get to the end, I've got about five or so verses. They're kind of jumpy around. 
Um, so you don't necessarily have to turn to him. I'll do the work for you. Um, but my, my first, uh, first couple verses is 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. <clears throat> and that says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. He hears us. For, for, for believers, prayer seeks communion with the Father more than the acquisition of favors or the satisfaction of desires. When we are constantly in prayer with him and we are constantly trying to get to know the Lord, because that, that, that's part of our life. We, we want to get in the gospel. We want to get in the word of God and we want to try to get to know him. We don't want to just hang out and say, hey, I, I accept Christ and just keep on sinning and keep on going. Because the thing is, if you keep on sinning and you're not getting convicted, something's wrong in your heart and you've got to reevaluate that. So just, just keep that in mind. Study the word of God. Don't just read it. He will give you the desires of your heart if you are within his will. If it's within his will, you will get that. Now, sometimes that takes time. It might take two weeks for you to get that prayer answered. It might take a couple of years, but that's all right. And even if he says no, even if he tells you no, that's okay too because it's his will, not ours. Like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of flipping around because apparently they got a timeline. And we got to end this. Well, too bad, guys. You're here until I'm finished. <laughs> First Chronicles 16.11. <clears throat> First Chronicles 16.11. I'm just kidding. I know the Arkansas Razorbacks are playing right now, so I know you guys want to get out. Anyway, First Chronicles 16.11. That says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. We must seek him always. We need his strength, not ours. We cannot do this on our strength alone. We're not here because of us. We're not here because we evolved from some monkey. Um, we're not here because, you know, we think we can do it our, ourselves, you know. Unfortunately, there, there, there are people where they never accept the, the, the word of God. They never accept Christ, and they just live. And, I mean, yeah, they kind of do it themselves. But they're not getting the blessings from God because they're not turning to God, and they're not using his strength and pouring that back into their lives. We can't be moping around and not getting to know the one who shows us unconditional love and expect his glories and favors, right? If we want to mope around, we want to sit around, and we want to say, poor me, boo me, well, guess what, buddy? You, you, you just keep on, keep on going your um, sinful ways, and you won't get his blessings. You won't get his mercies. The Father loves us. He wants to show us those mercies. He wants to give you those mercies. We need to turn to him. We need to fully submit to him. And I know it's hard. It's like I preached um, this past Sunday in Perry at our old, old church while, while um, we were that way. A lot of my messages, a lot of my sermons are more so geared towards me. I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. A lot of times it takes me to speak this outward for me to realize, hey, my heart's messed up too. It's not just you. Unfortunately, you and I are both sinners. No sin is the same. Or, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, no sin is above one. Sorry. Because at the end of the day, we don't deserve his love. He wants us to love him also. A very good verse of that, First John four nineteen. We love him because he first loved us. The Lord loved me before he even knew me. Or, I'm sorry. The Lord loved me before I even knew him. The Lord knew I was going to be out here going to tripper school and getting out here on these highways and doing the Lord's work um, before, I, I, before I even knew him. Before I decided to accept Christ back in my younger days, he still loved me. Every time I turn my head away from him, he still loves me. Every time you turn, turn your head away and you know you're sinning and you are actively doing it and you have that little conviction, he still loves you. Because he first lo loved me. I need to love him back. <clears throat> Second Chronicles seven fourteen. <laughs> Pretty familiar, huh? Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, 
and seek my face and turn away, or I'm sorry, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear their land. Now here, God is specifically talking, talking to Israel. You know, if Israel repents, this is what he will show and so on and so forth. Um, but I, I, th- I think this is, this is a very key point to even apply to our lives, even to apply to my life. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, you've got to humble yourself and know that he is greater than you. Again, it's not your strength, it's his. You need to pray, you need to seek him, you need to seek his face, you need to turn from your wicked ways. Because the thing is, if you keep sinning and you're not having a conviction over it, I'm not going to say if you're saved or not, but this isn't some crazy... um, sinful ordeal, sinful sermon. But I'll bring up the homosexuality thing real quick. The thing, you hate the sin, but you can still care for that person. You can still love that person. You need to hate what God hates because evil he hates, right? We need to hate the evil that he hates. Now, however, I can say this because, you know, probably every single person in this room has someone who is homosexual. uh, homosexual. However, the thing about that is, if you are continuously living in that sin, but you say you love God and you live for God, you're wrong because you're not being convicted of it and you're not turning away from your wicked ways. The same, I'm, like I said, I'm preaching to myself because I have my own addictions, I have my own sins, I have my own struggles. I need to turn from those wicked ways and straighten up and live for Him. And that's what we all need to do. We all need to turn from our wicked ways. And when we do that, when we humble ourselves, when we pray to him, and we are serious about the word of God and serious about him, he will bless us. He will hear us from heaven. He will forgive us of our sins. And as you all know, the United States is in a run of turmoil right now. We're saying, I mean, I know we are in the end times. I don't know how, how much long we have. I don't guess that kind of stuff, okay? But the USA, the greatest country on the, on the earth, now yes, Israel is, is God's chosen people. The Jews are, are his chosen people. But I still believe that U, US of A is the greatest country in the world because the Lord chose me to be here. We need to heal our land as well. We need to get this sin under control and so he can heal our land because we're talking about inflation. We're talking about rising prices. Like I said, I'm not getting into politics. I don't do that. But... We need to heal our land too. We need to remember in 1 John 5.14, God told us he hears us. We must seek him. We must be humble. We must pray from our hearts, repent of our sins, and progress in order for him to listen to our desires. There are four, four aspects of one attitude. To be humble, to pray, and seek him, and to turn away from your sins. Repentance. Be humble, pray, Seek him, turn away from your sins. Pretty much repentance right there in a nutshell. <clears throat> Romans twelve twelve. I love the book of Romans. It's, um, it's a pretty good one. I love the Bible, but the Romans is pretty good. I think Revelations is m- one of my favorite books as well um, because it, it, it just it shows you so many things that's happening right now. We are living the Bible times, but in the present. And the, and the Bible shows that. Right. Now, Romans 12 tells, says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Man, we, we are tried every day. We go through many tribulations. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I've done a, a couple sermons of that, um, over that kind of stuff. And... Um, I believe one, one of them were, were over the five crowns of, of the Bible, and that was probably one, one of my favorite ones. Um, it, was an, it was a very interesting study, um, but we, we are tried so much. We need to hear, have a cheerful spirit. We all face trials. When we are tried, we must be patient and trust Him. Again, the Lord sends you through things that you can get through. Again, you need His strength. You can't do it by yourself. I can't do it by myself. I can't do it just with my wife and my family behind me. I need, I need him overall because it's God, family, state police, um, harps, whatever you want to chase, third, right? It's God, your family, uh, which family is, you know, your church family and your home family, all that family, and then everything else. 
that's pretty much how I, how I live my life. Um, now, again, I'm preaching myself because sometimes I fall short of that. And some days are better, th- better than the others. Uh, this evening is a pretty good evening. <clears throat> now, with that being said, we need to go to him in prayer, and we need to give it all to him. We need to be fervent even, even when you don't get your way. I've got it as you don't get your will, but at the end of the day, it's his will, not ours. So when you don't get your way, you need to be patient and trust in him. We need to pray that we change our mindsets to be focused on his will, not ours. Man, we're making pretty good time. You guys are very welcome. (laughs) But you just wait. James 5.16. Like I said, I apologize for all the jumping around, but all these, all these key verses, these, these five or six verses or so, they all tied in this one thing, fervent prayer. They all had yes. prayer within the verses, so I really don't apologize, apologize for all the flipping around. Like I said, I'll do the work for you. You guys just sit back and listen, and I really hope you enjoy it, and I really hope you imply, apply something to your lives from this message. James 5.16 is another big one. I'm pretty sure that was on the prayer guide. Um, like I said, the, the Lord works in mysterious ways. As soon as I saw that guy, I said, man, this is crazy. The Lord is so good. So James 5, 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer, get that? The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You need to confess your faults to one another. I'm not talking about a priest. We're not Catholic. I don't, I don't believe in that. We're not not talking about praying to Mary. We, we're not doing that. I'm talking about you go, if you've got something going on in your life and, and you're hiding in the shadows because guess what? If you're hiding something in the shadows, it's really not in the shadows because the good Lord sees it. If you, when you, you think you are solid, you're in the dark, you're sinning, um, what, whatever it is, you're breaking the law, I'm going to find out. But <laughs> what, what, whatever it is in the darkness, right, the Lord knows. You need to confess your faults. You need to bring those addictions forward. I brought some of the biggest addictions to my wife, and it humbled me tremendously. Um, everyone, everyone has struggles in this room. Sometimes you've got to make yourself uncomfortable, and you've got to go to your loved ones. You've got you to go to your pastor, admit those ordeals. You've got to go in front of your church, admit those ordeals, so you can turn that around. Now, I'm telling you right now, it, it is a process. Every day is not... A good day. Some days are better than others. Some days are really bad. But when you when you have that fervent prayer life, you're fine because you, you realize, hey, I'm I'm messing up. Turn it back around. Turn that steering wheel back to the right, to the left, whatever. My left, your right. <clears throat> to grow and get out of your addictions, you need his strength and his help. Talk to your peers. Make yourself uncomfortable. Go to your loved ones and ask for prayers, motivation, help. Asking for help is okay, and it's not a sign of weakness. Okay? It's actually the opposite. It's a part of growth. Growth. You always need to progress and move forward. If we're not progressing and moving forward in the name of God, then what are we doing? If we're not out here soul winning, we're not knocking doors, and we're not preaching the word of God, and we're not teaching the younger generation, then why are we here? We need people, when this guy retires, we need people to step up. I don't know who it is, if it's going to be you or someone else in this room, but we need to teach these little kids about the Word of God and who God is so when we pass away and we, we, we decide to retire, they can stand up here for us and they can keep this train going. Because at the end of the day, like I said, we're going to lose more people to hell than to heaven, and we need to change that today. I didn't live 50, 50 years ago. I didn't live 100 years ago, but I've heard stories that's a lot worse now, and it's going to get a lot worse before the rapture occurs. So we need to get out here, and we need to teach these young ones about God. We need to get out here, and we need to teach the older ones who haven't been exposed to the Word of God as well. And we need to get a control of those addictions. We need to get a control of those sins and we need to get that fervent prayer life down. Now, with that being said, those are all my verses, Be- besides one. <clears throat> to end this off, these are the ten benefits of fervent prayer. 
10 benefits of fervent prayer that I came across. One, helps you to develop a relationship with Him. Like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure I said that. If you're not trying to get closer to Him, you're not trying to get to know Him, then what are you doing? If, if, if the Father God didn't send His Son to forgive me of my sins, to, to give me a better life when I pass on, and to go and join Him in heaven, then what's the point of even praying? The point is, He did send His Son to save us. He did, he did send His Son to come here and, and, and teach us about God so we can develop a relationship with Him. Number two, it helps you gain an understanding of God's loving nature. Oh, why does God give my, my dad cancer? Why did God take my, take my mom away and throw her in prison? Brother, I can't, I, I can't tell you the answer. I can search for the answer, but I can't tell you the answer. But I do know the lo- our God is a loving God. The Lord did it for a reason, and He's going to get you through it. We all make mistakes, and unfortunately, they've got to pay for their mistake right now. But if or when they ever get out, you can help them turn their life around. Yes. Our God is a loving God. No matter what trials you go through, the thing is, <clears throat> our parents set their kids up for, for, the, for the trials that they go through. Everything that I do wrong, my, my son will pay for it in a way. I'm not saying, you know, God is going to punish him and stuff like that, but he's going to go through trials because of the things that I set him up for. If I don't teach him how to save money and manage money well, then he's going to blow all of his money. If I don't teach him about the Word of God, he's going to end up in hell, and we can't do that. Number three, it provides answers. It provides answers to your prayers. Um, it provides answers to things that you need answers for. Um, we need to be fervent because there will be a time where he gives you an answer, and sometimes the answer is not what we wanted. But like I said, it's his will, not ours. Number four, helps you find direction in life. You might not know where you're going. You might not know what you want to do. If you want to be a state trooper, I can, I can talk to you about that. But it can help you find direction in life. Sometimes you've got to go to him and, like I said, be humble, submit yourself to him, and just call upon the name of the Lord, and he'll give you an answer. Now, he might not say, hey, brother, you're going to go do this. Excuse me. You're going to go be this. Little lady, you're going to go do this in the church, and you're going to go do that outside the church. Sometimes he doesn't speak like that. Sometimes he speaks, um, what was that verse, Galatians 5.13? Galatians 5.13, uh, if you know that, it talks, uh, talks about ye are called unto liberty. When we got the state trooper, uh, state trooper gig, we knew we were coming to White County. We were blessed. I've been away from home for about four years. Uh, I knew we needed to find a good Bible-preaching, Bible-believing church. And I knew this was one of them because um, our church in Perry has some, some little plaque I think you guys might have helped with the, the growth or something of that church. And I said, okay, we know, we know one's there. <clears throat> we'll try that out. I think either before the visit or after the visit, I'm not sure. Uh, my, my little lady there, she was reading her Bible, as she should. And she came across uh, Galatians 5.13, and she said, you are called unto liberty. She said, hey, that's our sign. I said, hey, that's pretty good, because I already, I already knew we were called there. So, And we're here. Number five, I'm going to try to finish real quick. It gives you strength to avoid the temptations. Amen. When you're going through those trials, when you feel tempted, pray. If you need to scream, just start screaming. If you're in the middle of Walmart and whatever reason you are tempted, just start screaming. People might look at you weird, but hey, if you got over that temptation and you're living for the Lord, that is a great reward. Matthew 26, verse 41, it says, Watch and pray that ye enter... Not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Our flesh is so weak. I can't tell you how weak it is. I can't tell you how weak I am. I'm pretty sore right now, actually. I've been hitting the gym. I've been out of trip school for a couple weeks, and my body's gotten really weak, so I'm actually pretty sore. But 
the, the flesh is weak. We can't do it out on our, on, on our own. We can't fight through those temptations and avoid those temptations on our own. We need to get in the Word of God, and we need to pray to Him. We need to be fervent with that. Number six, align your will with God's. Again, it's not our will, it's His. Once we get in prayer, once we fully submit to Him, we study our Bible, not just read. When we study the Bible, you will align your will with God. And at the end of the day, that, that's what we want and we need. Number seven, reg, uh, prayer and regular fasting can help you accept God's will. A lot of the times we don't want to accept God's will because we say, hey, Lord, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a song leader. I totally remember back in Perry when uh, Pastor Winston stepped down and he retired due to his health. Uh, Pastor Williams stepped up. He said, hey, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I need someone else to be the song leader. Whether or not it's within or out the church, uh, I need you guys to pray. So you know what? I started praying for it. I started studying the Word of God. Like I said, some days are better than others. But I started praying, Lord, send us a song leader. Whether it's within the church or outside the church, we need a song leader. Months went by, I said, man, no one's stepping up. I'm really not good at singing. But, um, hey, Brother Ed, I can be your song leader. That was, that was a regretful moment. But it was a great moment because that was the Lord's will. It wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't the job that I wanted, but no one else was going to step up. Someone needed to do it. Sometimes that's what you need to do as a church. If someone else doesn't want to step up and do something, then you need to do it. Number eight, it can work miracles. Prayer can work miracles. If something happens within a church and it's, if it's within God's will and you come as a church and you pray fervently over it, you can see a miracle. The Lord can move some mountains. Sometimes it's not within His will and they go too soon. According to our will, they go too soon. But according to His will, it's on time. But as you see, Prayer can work miracles. Number nine, almost done. You can invite the prayer, fervent prayer invites the Holy Spirit into your life. When you, when, you, when you get saved, you get that rushing feeling. You get that adrenaline and you're pumped. You're on fire for God and we need to stay on fire for God. We need to get on fire for God like Pastor Brooks preached about a couple of Sundays ago. It invites the Holy Spirit into your life. And the part about that is the good thing about the Holy Spirit and the bad thing about it if you want to call it that, when you, when you start sinning, you start getting these little convictions in your head and, 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 and in your heart. That is good and bad. I say bad because it makes you realize, oh, man, I'm messing up. I'm messing up bad time. But it's good because that means you're progressing, you're feeling bad for it, and you're going to do better because at the end of the day, you're fervently praying, you're inviting the Holy Spirit into your heart, and you're getting within the will of God. Last one, number 10. And I, I probably would say this is the most important one. It helps you become more like Jesus. The thing about being a Christian is we need to be Christ-like. We need to be just like Him. We need to be on our best behavior for Him and for other people. We need to love Him. We need to love our neighbors. We need to love our, our, um, our citizens within our state, our country, and our globe because that's what He told us to do. I get it. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you, you, you don't want to love your neighbor. You don't want to love that guy that is just doing you wrong. He's just doing you wrong, and he just hates everyone in the world. He hates the cops. I don't know what I did, but he hates me, right? But the, at the end of the day, we need to love him because he first loved us. We need to show that, that neighbor, that friend, love. Um, something I preached up in Perry because the thing is, if you show that neighbor love, you show that person love that you're passing by, they might be going through some difficult trials. They might be going through some difficult things. And you said, hey, I hope you have a great day. You might have just saved that person's life. He, was, he or she could have been about to get ready and take themselves out. Just your little glare at them and said, hey, brother, I love you. Hey, sister, I hope you have a great day. You just saved someone's life. So we, we, we need to stop being mean to people for no reason. We need to get in the Word of God. We need to pray fervently. And we need to be more like Jesus because at the end of the day, Jesus wasn't like that. And He's still not like that. He's a loving God. 
if you don't accept him, we all know where, where, they, where they end up. They end up in the lake of fire. But he's still loving God. Amen. We need to be more like him. Pastor Brooks, this is yours.